let's paint autumn themed nature illustrations with watercolor paint. If you like to join me, grab your paint supplies and there is a list in the description to see what you could need in this tutorial. So grab your stuff and let's go. I like to start with some leaves. I like this to be an easy and mindful exercise, so no emphasis on it being perfect. Everything is alright. So I'm not so happy with the color yet, but that's alright. I am going to drop in some dark green here. I think I'm going for some olive because I think that it doesn't look autumn-y enough. This color might help. Alright. So, that's the first one. I think with this olive paint I'm going to paint another leaf. Adding some dark right here. Moving on. Of course, it is autumn, so we can use some brown and orange leaves as well. So I'm not sketching first, I'm just doodling a bit. But I like to create a leaf with more points to it, like this. Alright. Now with some more red brown color I'm going to paint yet another leaf but I think I will be moving on soon to some other illustrations leaves are just an easy way to get in the vibe Get those cozy awesome feelings. But we're only just beginning. So perhaps later on we are going to come back for some details, but for now I like to Keep it simple. So let's make a mushroom. For this I'm going to start with some burnt umber to paint the top. So I'm doing an outline and then I'm grabbing some water and I'm going to Brush this off like this. Adding some more to the side. Now with some more water. 
I can't believe that I did that. I forgot to change the camera angle. Okay, I'm going to make another one. So, for this, we're going to paint like the top of the mushroom. And with water, paint it in. Trace the outline and then grab some water. to soften the edges like this Alright, time to let that one dry. So what I like to do here is paint some berries on a branch. Dropping in some more dark. And then use red for the berries. I like to add one there as well. All right, time to paint an acorn leaf. So I'm tracing the outline with my paint and then grab some water on my brush and then I'm just mixing it out, softening the lines and here's my leaf. So I like to give it more autumn colors so I am dropping in some yellow, very playful and adding some dark green for details and because the paint is still wet this is blending in so we are going back later once the paint has dried for the actual details This is a bit too much. Mm -hmm. 
So for now, I think I'm just going to let this dry and see how it's going to work out. So now I like to make a toadstool. So for this, we are going to start with a red cap. And I like this one to be a bit more flat like this. And of course, normally you've got the white dots on the toads too. And I like to do that. I am not in the mood to use masking fluid. So I'm going to paint those on later on with some white gouache. So for now, I like to paint this top of the toadstool with red. I'm using some dark pink for the middle. And now I'm going back to my burnt umber with a very light wash. So a lot of watercolor on my brush. And I'm going to paint the outline for the bottom of the top. So this is a different shape than the mushrooms we've painted before. I'm going to wash this out a bit so that it's a softer line and it's I like to paint this way to paint in shapes with some graduation, graduating and making sure that you've got this really nice crisp line. So I'm going to let that dry and then when it's dried we can add the stripes as a detail. But we can move on to the bottom. For these doodles I like to use burnt umber a lot because this way we've got the same color theme and balance. So all the illustrations that we're making are fitting together. All right, it's time to let this one dry. No, I'm going to add a bit more shade down here. Yes. And I might as well add a bit more here. All right, so now it's time to let that one dry and we come back to it later. So I'm thinking I like to draw a nice long leaf right here and I'm trying to make it a bit like a fern. So starting out with these smaller leaves right here
dropping in some green right here. I think it would be nice to draw a pine cone as well. So I like to start, I'm going to do this with burnt umber as well, a bit darker. Well, that's nice. I think I'm going to make another one right here. Alright, I like to have some acorns as well, so I'm going to put some ochre on my brush and I'm going to draw the caps. And now with a little less pigment on my brush, I'm going to paint the acorns so with the same color only a lighter wash and now with some burnt umber putting like a tip on here down here so we're coming back for the actual details later. I'm going to wash this out a bit. Now for now we're going to let those dry and we are going to... Let me see. Well, I like to stay nature themed at this moment and, and use another page for some other cozy stuff, autumn stuff. So I think I'm going to paint another autumn leaf. Just starting out with orange, but I think I like to draw drop in some other colors later on. So this is like the sketching part. line of the leaf first and I'm going to add some pointy bits. Thank you. 
So I'm grabbing a darker orange. So again, later on, we're going to paint the actual details, but I always like to drop in some colors this way so it blends in nicely, covering the outlines. So I guess I like to add some burnt umber as well so that I feel it is a better fit with the rest of the illustrations that we've been working on thus far. tree branch right here so for this I'm going to first draw a brown line and I think a line like here so that it's a, it's got a split branch and then I'm going to mix some green or I'm going to pick this one it's a bit of blue it's aqua green I think I'm going to like it for those needles here. Well, that's looking lovely. So I like to do a few more things because I've got a few small spaces left. Let's do a few more berries. and then a few more leaves I like to get a bit more or I keep some variety in the leaves that were drawing here
all right let me see we can also paint a chestnut right here so i'm basically just filling in the spaces that i left and i like to get creative with what i can uh, put in there All right, so I really think that I did my best here. So one last leaf, and then it's time to let this dry. So we can come back for adding some details. So we are finishing off this last leaf and then this first layer has dried. I always like to come back for some extra details once the paint is dry. So I like to use a smaller round brush for this, like a size 1 or a size 2. And well, starting with the green leaf, I like to use a darker green and then add in some stripes. So for each leaf, I like to decide on a different kind of details. So moving on to the other light green leaf, I like to add some more stripes. So making sure I've got enough paint on my brush and enough water balance so that I can make some really smooth thin lines. So one line down the middle and then adding several lines from the sides trying to keep it very subtle so i've got the dark green on my brush now so i'm moving around to the other leaves the other green leaves at this point and playing around a bit with the amount of details I like to add to each leaf. This isn't rocket science, this isn't copying of an image, it's just doing what feels right. So I suggest that you do the same. So moving on to the acorn leaf here, of course forgetting to adjust the camera angle, my apologies for that. What I like to do with acorn leaves is making really gentle curvy lines and then with some water on my brush, brushing them out so that they are some, a bit softer. adding some extra texture to the leaf so yes and then moving on to the fern so for this I like to add a lot of details so small stripes and then once the leaves get bigger I like to add even more stripes to those stripes so for me, this is a very relaxing and mindful exercise. So I always love to do this, put on a little music and then just relax. Don't need to think about this. Alright, so those stripes are done and of course I like to add some extra color to the middle of this fern leaf. 
So very gently with some dark green, tracing the lines. And now I am adding the smaller stripes within the leaves of the fern leaf. So I guess I'll see you in a bit. So that is done, moving on to the other acorn leaf and this time you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So again I am drawing a straight line with the tip of my brush and some dark green paint and then adding curvy smaller lines to the sides. And they don't need to be perfect, they don't need to be the same, adding in a bit smaller lines even and trying to keep it very playful. So I still have a few green leaves left. For this one I am painting very gentle thin strokes. I think that was the last one, so now moving on to the brown leaf. So for this I have burnt umber on my brush, only with less water, so it's more pigmented and therefore darker. So for this leaf I like to paint lines to the pointy ends and add some smaller lines to those lines. I always love this process of adding details because this is the moment that the illustration really get shaped and some character. So now with some red ochre I am drawing a line on this red leaf and then many many lines from that centered line to the sides. This leaf has got the texture with the pointy ends and I like the lines to fit with those pointy ends. 
It's like the character of this leaf and I'm really liking the way this is coming together. Moving on, so I've got some purple on my brush now. Of course, very difficult for you to see now because again, I'm not paying attention to my camera angle. But what I'm doing is following like the bottom line of these circles with some purple and I'm not doing it with every berry. As you can see, I deliberately painted the berries lighter and darker red and I also like to put some variation with the purple in the shades because in nature also every shape it's not the same so that's what I like to do I like to put some variation in my illustrations so moving on there's another leaf right here and I'm using the same burnt umber the dark brown paint to add in some extra details so make sure that you've got enough water on your brush otherwise your lines aren't flowing so moving on to this bigger leaf so i am also using the same burnt umber again and i'm retracing the lines that we softly painted in the first layer so adding some extra details and then of course adding some smaller lines and really really gently so they are soft they don't need to be perfect for this leaf with the same color i like to paint a really thin line in the middle And then a few really, really thin lines, just a few of them. Moving on to our acorns. So again, with the same color, and I am going to start with the caps of the acorns. And those caps, I like to paint lines from top to bottom and also from side to side so that you get this you get this nice structure on the caps Now for the acorns themselves, I also like to paint some lines. But only from top to bottom. I really like this style. So now moving on to our toadstool. We need to add some white dots on top of that one. So for this I'm using some white gouache and very playfully drop in some colors. I like to have them bigger and smaller and have some variation also where I locate them. A few on the sides, a few in the middle. I am really really loving this. And as I mentioned before, now that the paint has dried, we can come back to this bottom part of the cap to add some lines. So I am getting my burnt umber on my smaller brush and now I'm going to paint some stripes. So at this point you really can see this toad still coming together and it's looking awesome. So 
So what I like to do here is put some water on my brush and brush out a little bit those uh, brown lines so that they get a bit softer. So perhaps putting a little uh, light wash of the burnt umber and retrace the lines when they have already dried too much. This way Yes, it's really, really starting to look very good. And now I also like to add some details on the other mushrooms. So with the same burnt umber again and not a lot of water, so that I've got this really dark brown paint on my brush, I like to use the tip of my brush and go past these ridges here. And then on the cap, I also like to follow the bottom line and then add in some smaller lines at the bottom and perhaps even do a few washouts and add some smudges here and there on the cap. You know what, I think I'm going to add a whole lot of darker brown to the top of this cap because I think that this mushroom can use some extra. So really dark wash and keeping it playful doesn't need to be perfect. Grabbing some water and brushing this out a bit, making the paint flow. I like to have a very rough texture on this one but I'm liking it that it gets, it gets a bit more brown pigment on this one. Grabbing a bit gray and adding it to the bottom of the mushroom. So we are going to do the same thing on the other mushroom as well, with the thin lines alongside the bottom of this mushroom and alongside the bottom of the cap, making it very playful, scribbly lines, some stripes. And then I think that we covered everything, so it's time to let this dry and then we're done. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you're happy with the result. If you like to share, I love to see what you created. So please do send me a DM or post it on your social media and tag me. Of course, I also like to use the hashtag create with Sandras. So thank you again for watching this video. And if you like to see more content, then don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.